This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 182, Waking Up. Sam Harris discusses the benefits of mindfulness, part one, by Joshua Fields Milburn of TheMinimalist.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Welcome back if you're an oldie, as I like to say. Not calling you old. Old stands for Optimal Living Daily. So I often refer to you as an oldie or as an old friend. Both the same thing in my eyes. Anyway, this whole week, I'm featuring excerpts from the minimalist book, Essential, which is a collection of their essays. It's giving me a little break since I previously recorded the whole book. It was either that or I was going to not record for a week, and that's not my style. I've said it before, if I'm physically able to put out an episode, then I'm going to do it, so I'm sticking with that for as long as I can because I don't want to stop this 180-something streak. Uh, I was an emotional wreck this past week starting a Sunday's episode, and that's why I needed the break, but I'm physically able to do it, so here's another episode for you. And today's reading is of Joshua from The Minimalists interviewing Sam Harris. Not to be confused with Dan Harris, who I featured in Tuesday's episode. Sam and Dan are not related, but both practice meditation. And now, Sam is known for having a very controversial stand on religion, but that's not what this is about, and I'm hoping we can set that aside for the next 5-10 to minutes, because his stance on meditation and mindfulness is not controversial. This is backed by science, something I've experienced myself too, Uh, So what he has to say here is helpful and something I really wanted to share with you. It's a long post, so I've broken it up, and we'll do the first part today, and we'll finish it tomorrow. So with that, let's hear the first part of this interview and start optimizing your life. Sam Harris Discusses Mindfulness by Joshua Fields Milburn Sam Harris is the author of several best-selling books and winner of the 2005 Penn Award for Nonfiction. He's a co-founder and the CEO of Project Reason, a nonprofit foundation devoted to spreading scientific knowledge and secular values in society. He received a degree in philosophy from Stanford University and a PhD in neuroscience from UCLA. Don't let the credentials scare you, though. He's an awesome guy. Waking Up, A Guide to Spirituality Without Religion, Sam's newest book, is part seeker's memoir, part exploration of the scientific underpinnings of spirituality. No other book marries contemplative wisdom and modern science in this way, and no author other than Sam Harris, a scientist, philosopher, and famous skeptic, could write it. Sam was kind enough to discuss waking up and mindfulness with me for The Minimalists. JFM At its onset, waking up introduces a common dilemma. Quote, How can someone's happiness increase when all material sources of pleasure and distraction have been removed? Unquote. The thesis of my books is similar. We are focused on the wrong things, or perhaps we're not focused at all. Your solution? Change the quality of your mind. Is this what you mean by waking up? Sam. That's part of it. It's certainly true that our minds largely determine the quality of our lives. I'm not saying that outward circumstances don't matter. You and I can both be very grateful that we aren't living in Syria at this moment. But once a person has his basic needs met... How he uses attention in every moment will spell the difference between happiness and misery. In particular, the habit of spending nearly every waking moment lost in thought leaves us at the mercy of whatever our thoughts happen to be. Meditation is a way of breaking this spell. Focus is one aspect of this. One discovers that concentrating on anything is intrinsically pleasurable, but there's more to meditation than just being focused. JFM Until recently, I found much value in single-task meditative experiences, walking, yoga, rock climbing, but never turned to actual meditation until two books changed my view. Waking Up and another book you recommended, Dan Harris's, no relation, 10% Happier. I interviewed Dan recently about why he turned to meditation to calm the voice in his head, and his experience resonated because he was able to remove the Eckhart Tolle-esque woo-woo that had always kept me from considering meditation as an answer to mental clutter. Your book, however, reverberated for a different reason. While Dan's book was a practical guide, Waking Up takes a deeper dive, an investigative scientific approach to meditation in which all assertions can be tested in the quote-unquote laboratory of the mind. Can you expand on the differences between meditation and meditative experience? And from a neuroscientist's point of view, why is meditation important for everyone? Sam. I love Dan's book, and I also interviewed him on my blog, samharris.org. Of course, there are different levels at which one can engage a practice like mindfulness, which Dan and I both discuss in our books. For many people, it'll be like an executive stress ball, a tool for feeling a little better and improving one's performance. However, if one becomes deeply involved in the practice, it becomes more like the Large Hadron Collider, a means of discovering something fundamental, in this case about the nature of our minds. 
Perhaps the most important thing one can discover through the practice of meditation is that the self, the conventional sense of being a subject, a thinker, an experiencer living inside one's head, is an illusion. And this is where meditative insight actually makes contact with science, because we know that the self is not what it seems to be. There is no place in the brain for a soul or an ego to be hiding. And it is possible to examine this illusory self closely enough to have the feeling that we call I disappear. As it happens, this comes as quite a relief. JFM, your writing, your books, and your blog beautifully combines humor, pathos, and intellectual prowess and has the rare ability to shift my perspective on a variety of topics such as drugs, gun control, violence, and morality. Compared to the rest of your body of work, how is waking up different? Sam, it is definitely a more personal book. In terms of its scientific and philosophical message, it is also unconventional. I've come to these questions by a strange route. I dropped out of college and spent my 20s deeply immersed in the study of meditation and its associated literature. I then returned to school and got a degree in philosophy and a PhD in neuroscience. After September 11, 2001, I spent a decade doing my best to call attention to the conflict between science and faith-based religion. This background allows me to approach the topic of spirituality from an unusual angle. Most scientists and philosophers reject introspection as an intellectual tool, and most long-term meditators have little understanding of science. When you do find the rare scientist who has a serious meditation practice, he or she is unlikely to be especially aware of the problem of religion, hence many become boosters for Western Buddhism, or for the supposed underlying unity of all faiths. In waking up, I do my best to cut a new path through this wilderness. The self really is an illusion, and realizing this is the basis of spiritual life. But there is nothing that need be accepted on faith to accomplish this. We can have our cake, reason, skepticism, intellectual honesty, and eat it too. That was part one of Waking Up, Sam Harris Discusses the Benefits of Mindfulness by Joshua Fields Milburn of TheMinimalist.com, which you can read in The Minimalist book, Essential. I'm actually giving away a different book by The Minimalist. I give one away on the first of every month, so if you'd like to be a part of that and also get some spreadsheets from me that I built just for you, Come by oldpodcast.com, enter your email, and you'll immediately get your digital downloads. And as I mentioned, you'll be entered to win a book at least once a month, if not more. So tomorrow will be a continuation of today, but for now, have a happy Friday, and I'll see you in part two of this post on Saturday, where your optimal life awaits.